doing everyone? I hope you're well. I thought you'd like to see some progress on a model I've been working on for about six months. Uh, it's This is Academy's 810C that I've, been, uh, that I've been building for a new book project that I'm hoping to release at some point this year. It's one of those models that I've had to work on in fits and starts rather than sticking to as a, an ongoing project from start to finish. So I'm kind of getting there now. I think it's at, at a point where it's it's not far away from from being ready to paint. I've got a few little things that I've been working on that I've shown you on my Facebook page, including the, the cockpit that you can see here, um, and it's windscreen that I've tried to blend in a little bit more than is possible. Certainly in my release from the box, uh, the, there was a distinct kind of step on the front of the front of the windscreen, which I've, I've kind of filled. And uh, I've just been working on it to try and create a smooth transition from, from the side of the fuselage onto the windscreen. So that's kind of where we are at the moment. But that's not really the point of this video. I thought I'd show you uh, a, a, a set that I've bought that improves this kit beyond what's possible from the box. If you've ever been, built this kit, you will know that that Academy have done what a lot of other manufacturers have done with turbofan aircraft, SE in particular, when they released their 48 scale S3 Viking, is that the, the openings, the intakes for these turbofans had the, had the face of the fan much closer to the outside edge of the, of the ring. So the, the, the actual parts need to be deepened so that they push further back into the nacelle. This is a kit part that I've adjusted, and what it involved was was cutting out sections of the the, the plastic parts that are su supplied, reversing them, and then pushing the fan kind of deeper into this what is essentially just two parts. You can kind of see where I've kind of where I've cut the ring on the edge here, and how that sort of manifested itself inside the nacelle itself and that then gets put onto the front of the engine pod you can kind of see it certainly improves things but it doesn't look that neat so what i decided i was going to do was turn to the aftermarket and buy something that i could use for this kit that would improve the way that these quite distinctive features look. And so what I did is I turned to a company that I'd not seen before, and that was that is this. This is uh, the Minicraft collection. They produce a whole bunch of detailed parts for uh, kits such as Academy's A10. They're all 3D printed, and they come in these glorious tin boxes, as you can see here. You, get, you also get a set of instructions that show you what to do, which are which are here. These instructions show you how to remove the parts from the carriers that they're molded integrally with. Now, we'll come back to that a little bit later on because the, the carriers that hold some of these parts, in particular the very delicate fans, are extraordinarily difficult to remove, I found, but I guess the work is, is, is worth it. These are the instructions that show you how to construct the parts. You can see here, this is pretty straightforward stuff, really. Once the, you've cleaned up the parts, removed all of the carriers and um, all of the supports, uh, I guess is the, the, the best description. Once you've removed all of those supports, then it's a pretty straightforward process to get there's n to get these parts into the to, to the engine pods. There's not a lot of, uh, of parts that are, that are supplied. You can see here, there's a main structural member that goes inside the nacelle itself. And then onto that, you fix the exhaust, you fix the fan, and then the main outer ring face is then pushed into place over the top of that. So it's all pretty straightforward stuff. The instructions are quite explicit as well. Here you can see it tells you how this support matches with the ribs that are inside the upper section of the nacelle. So you get an impression of how that would go together. I was slightly concerned about putting those parts in and, and lining them up. And I wasn't entirely sure how that would work, but it looks like that's pretty straightforward. And having dry fit it 
last night. It looks like they fit pretty well as well. So inside the box, these have now been cleaned up. I, I took a look at these yesterday and cleaned them up, but this is essentially what you get in this little box of parts. You can see here that these are all 3D printed, as I mentioned earlier. You have the outer, um, I guess, intake rings. There are two of those. These are the exhausts. And if the camera will zoom in on there, you can see how detailed those are. And they've got those lovely raised rivets that run around the circumference of each one. You've got um, this, this fan here that fits inside. This is part of the exhaust, fits inside that exhaust. And I'm not sure if you can see this, if I hold this up, you can see the way it's printed. It's actually hollow inside there as well those ribs are actually raised above the surface. Not a lot of this will be seen on the inside the, the completed model, but the detail in there is really nice and crisp. And then there's these, these are the fans. Now I'll show you the one that I haven't painted up. Here you go. You can see that they're um, completely separated from each other. Now these parts here are the most troublesome part of this of this whole set because these are fixed in place onto the support and underneath you can probably see some tiny little pips. You can see those underneath. Those tiny little pips there hold very very fine supports that hold this piece in place on a circular plate, on a circular um, printing plate. Getting these off from and removing it from that plate is extraordinarily difficult and I had all sorts of problems with it. In fact, this is this is one, this was the second one that I did, so I learned from the problems I had with the first one. And the first one, I shattered five of the blades off it um, in one go and then managed to break another two while I was cleaning it up. One of those that I broke, I actually lost. So one of the blades on this face here, I had to carve from a piece of plastic card so that it didn't, so that it looked like it was a complete piece. Um, but you can see these two here. You can see how delicate they are. They're, they are just extraordinarily fine. And because this resin is quite brittle, it doesn't take much to break these parts off. So they're worth it. They're worth getting off that pr printing plate, but they are difficult to do so. And they need a degree of skill and dexterity to make sure that you do that without breaking them. But once they're in place and they fit inside, you can see how worthwhile that that work is. That makes a massive difference. And if you kind of compare that with the, wherever I've put the other part, if you compare the 3D printed part with that that's supplied by Academy, you can just see the difference. That's, uh, that really is extraordinary, I think. And I think because it's such an eye-catching feature, it will make a real, you know, a real difference to the way that the model looks once it's complete. It'll, it'll be an eye-catching part of, of, uh, of this build. These sets are, that there are other sets available for, for, the, uh, for the A10 and 3D printed sets as well. Uh, Phase Hanger Resin, for instance, Mike Reeves' company, does a similar kind of set. Uh, they approach it in a slightly different way, but it's very similar to this. So you do have choices when it comes to the replacement of these engine faces. There isn't just one option available to you. You don't need to just go for this one. This was just the one that that, that seemed um, available and and simple for me to get hold of because I simply I, I ordered it just from Hannans, which was great. Um, but I am pleased with it and and certainly would look again at, at, at what they do. I think that they're a they're a progressive company that seem to be producing some very nice parts. So I thought you'd like to see this just before I glue this all this together at some point, so you can sort of see what this thing looks like. I've included some photographs with this with this video as well, so you can see this in a 
deep these parts in a little bit more detail. And hopefully at some point in the future, you'll see all of them in place within the engine nacelles of, the, uh, of this completed model when I finally get around to, to completing it. And, and hopefully that will, that will help to, to create a, a, a nicely detailed build that I can display. This, the, the plan for this is going to be to do one of the, one of the um, anniversary schemes as a D-Day anniversary scheme for this, for this model. It's got D-Day invasion stripes on it. It's a, essentially a, a compass grey aircraft, but it's got black and white invasion stripes on. And I rather like how it looks in the flesh. I think it's a, it's an, it's a, nice, it's a nice sort of version. Other modellers have done other versions from the same sheet that I'm going to use uh, of decals for this. Um, but that's the one I chose. I thought I'd go for something that was a little bit more reserved rather than the, 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 the more definite um, um, anniversary schemes that were out there. So that's it. That's my, my progress so far on this, on this <laughs> long-winded and seemingly endless project that I've been working on for about six months. It's, I expected when I started this thing, I thought it's only going to take a month or so to build this model. It's quite straightforward, but like I say, I seem to have got more and more bogged down with it. And, and as I've got bogged down with it, I've lost my way a little bit. So yesterday while I was working on it, I described it as being a bit like walking through treacle because I, it was one step forward, two steps back. Hopefully by the end of this week, I'll, I'll have something that I can, I can start to, um, to plan some paintwork on. So I'll be able to show you some more photographs of that. In the meantime, thanks very much for watching my video. Thanks very much for the, the last video that you watched as well. I appreciate that I'm, I'm at the moment these are sort of rambling diatribes that I, I'm putting on here. So they're not, you know, they're not as, as, as focused as perhaps others are. But hopefully you'll enjoy seeing them and hopefully you're enjoying seeing some, some new work. If you do enjoy seeing what I'm putting on here now, because I'm hoping this is going to be a regular thing each week, um, please consider subscribing maybe press the, the the bell so you get some updates as well um, and um, I hope to see you again soon.